In this lecture, we're going to have a look at logarithms. Now, logarithms can be slightly difficult to understand at the best of times, uh, but this is how I uh, tend to introduce it. Uh, the applications that we'll be having a look at uh, for logarithms are mainly uh, the solution of indicial equations and the solution of logarithmic equations. Okay, so we use logarithms to solve both of those types of equations. Now, the best way that I uh, can introduce logarithms is any positive number can be written as 10 to a power. Okay, so for example, then 100 can be written as 10 times 10, okay, which is 10 squared. A thousand, for example, is 10 times 10 times 10, and this can be written as 10 cubed okay and of course any numbers in between a hundred and a thousand you'd have 10 to the power say 2.5 or 2.6 and numbers below 100 you'd have for example 10 to the power 1.5 or 1.6 okay so any numbers uh any positive numbers we can write as 10 to a power now this is where logarithms comes in what we can say is that log to the base 10 of a thousand is equals to three, okay? Log to the base 10 of a thousand equals three. So if we relate it back to what we wrote here, can we see this here, which is what we call the base, is the number that we were multiplying by itself to get this number. Okay, so this base number is the number that we're multiplying together to get this number here. And this is the number here that we need to raise that base to in order to get this number. Okay, so this is what we call the exponent. Okay, exponent. So we have to raise this base to that power to get this number. In other words, then, how many times do we need to multiply 10 by itself in order to get a thousand? Well, we need to multiply it by itself three times. Okay, so we have a nice little uh, relationship with exponentiation. In other words, raising things to powers. And log is almost like the, the inverse of uh, exponentiation. Okay, so the relationship that we get then is if we've got b to the power c equals a then this is the same as log to the base b of a equals c so for example then following on for what we from what we just saw 10 to the power 3 is equals to a thousand and that's the same as writing down uh, log to the base 10 of a thousand is equals to three. And we can use uh, any base as a number. Okay, the most popular ones we see uh, in engineering is log to the base 10 and also log to the base e. Okay, um, we do see log to the base two sometimes, mostly in computing when we're dealing with uh, binary operations. Okay, so the main ones then are log to the base 10. Okay, this is what we call the common log. Okay, common log. We also see log to the base E, okay, where E is Euler's number, okay, Euler's uh, constant, which is 2.71828, and it goes on forever. Uh, so we've got log to the base E, uh, and we can also write that down as ln, okay, ln. Some people mistake that for, for an i sometimes, but remember it's a, an l. Okay, and log to the base e is also uh, known as the natural log. Okay, the natural log. 
So it doesn't matter which base you use uh, when you're solving these equations, you'll end up with the same answer. It's just uh, your calculations in between will be slightly different. OK, so the, the numbers in your calculation as you go through your solution will look different, um, but the answer will come out as exactly the same. OK, so we use log to the base E in, in engineering sometimes and it's used in business and physics and many applications uh, because quite a few formulae that we see involve the exponential number. OK, and we get this nice little relationship if we go back to what we wrote here. Log to the base 10, for example, of 10. What do we think this is going to be? equals 2. So we should be able to do this in our heads. So how many times have we got to multiply 10 by itself to get 10? Well, we only need it once, don't we? So 10 to the power 1 is equals to 10. Now that relationship, of course, comes in for log to the base e. Okay, so log to the base e of e is also equals to 1. So when we're doing a bit of transposition of formula, particularly with formulae uh, that use Euler's constant, it does make some of the calculations a little bit easier. And of course, I've written log to the base e of e here. Um, you could also write this as ln of e. Okay, so ln of e is also equals to 1. And as I was saying then, uh, you know, we can have log of any base. So, for example, log to the base 2 of 8 what do we think this is? So again, it's one that you should be able to think of and, and do in your head. So how many times have we got to multiply 2 by itself to get 8? So let's think 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 again is 8. OK, so log to the base 2 of 8 is equals to 3. Yeah, 2 times 2 times 2, same as 2 cubed, which is equals to 8. OK, so we don't tend to deal with um, binary logs like this uh, too often, um, particularly with engineering uh, and, uh, you know, mathematics that we're covering in, in this module. Uh, but it is seen in, in computing, as I mentioned earlier. So going into the calculation side of things then, so how would we work something like this out? So we know that log to the base 10 of a thousand is equals to three. Um, but what if you had, say, log of 900 or log of 600 or 650? Then we would start getting uh, decimals here. So it's not something that we could guess. Now, years ago, we had something uh, called log tables where you would look this up uh, before my time, to be honest. But now we have this one. OK, so we can do all of this on a calculator now. Uh, now, any scientific calculator will have uh, these operations above the numbers. So we do use them sometimes. Uh, so how would you work out this log of a thousand? So remember now log, we're thinking of log to the base 10. So we press this button here. OK, so we've got log and we've also got ln there as well. So we've got log to the base 10 and log to the base e. Remember I said it doesn't matter which one you use as long as you use it consistently all the way through the question. OK, so if I wanted to do, for example, then log of a thousand, we would press log of a thousand, press equals. And hopefully you can see that we get uh, a number of three. OK, so we can see log of a thousand is equals to three. And of course, if I did a log of anything in between, so say we do log of 550, we get 2.74. OK, so if I did 10 to the power 2.74, we would get uh, 550. OK, so let's just try that. There you go, 550. So that's how we physically put it into the uh, calculator. But the other important thing that we need to look at when solution of indicial and logarithmic equations in particular are what we call the three laws of logarithms. OK, so the three laws of logs. Extremely important, and I'll be using this for all of the questions uh, that we'll be solving further on. Right, so the three laws of logs. We've got the first law of logs, 
which is if you have log of a times b, so a and b can be uh, two terms, okay, x's, uh, numbers, brackets, log of ab is equals to log a plus log b, okay, so first law of logs, log ab is equals to log a plus log b. Second law of logs, if we have log of a over b, okay, so a over b, we can write this as log a minus log b, okay, so very similar, but this time we've got a minus there instead, okay, so log of a over b is equal to log a minus log b. And we've got the third law of logs, which is arguably the most important one, if we have log of a to the power b, okay, a to the power b, then we can rewrite this as b log a, okay, b log a. So, like I said, arguably the most important one, because if you can see here, what we're doing is we're bringing this power down in front of the log, okay, very important when we start looking at uh, what we call indicial equations. Now, these laws do actually work. So if we substituted some numbers, uh, for example, into this first law of logs. So uh, say, for example, then a is equals to uh, 2 and b is equals to 3. Let's see if this satisfies this law. So if we've got then log of 2 times 3, yeah, a times b, 2 times 3, that is then equals to log of 2 plus log of 3. 2 times 3, of course, is 6. So we've got log of 6 is equals to log 2 plus log 3. Now, whenever you see log of a number, of course, that is just equals to a number. We put this on a calculator now. So log of 6 is 0.78. Log of 2 is 0 0.30. Plus log of 3 is 0 0.48. Okay, so if we add those together, we get 0 0.78. Therefore, it's been satisfied. And of course, you could do this for any of the uh, laws of logs. So do this for law 2 and law 3, and the same thing would happen. So they do actually work.